What's up guys, welcome back to Making Friends. We're covering rejection this week. It's everybody's favorite topic, it's always a good time. Yeah, not exactly. But for real, you can get rejected for just about anything today. Even things you can't control, like race, ethnicity, gender, what you wear, what you look like, teeth are straight, they're not, what school you went to, what job you got, what job you don't, what degree you have. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. So let's prepare ourselves and go over some practical tips for being rejected. Hey, we are cruising. You guys are really missing out this morning. So this video actually stemmed from me being rejected from a job that I've been applying to for over two months. I had five interviews. I thought I was all that. I thought I had it locked up and uh, I just didn't and I didn't get it. <laughs> and so I got on the topic of rejection. I've been doing a little bit of research. I've been checking out some articles and some research papers and stuff like that. And really a lot of them cover the mentality and I think you have to start there, but I wanna make sure that I give you guys some practical things that you can do to overcome and so let's start with the mentality. Simply put, if you don't change your mentality, then nothing's gonna change and every time you get rejected, you're gonna fall back to that first position. So the mentality tip number one is to look at rejection as an opportunity to learn and grow. Right, there's a lot of benefits you can get from being rejected, right? Think about salespeople, think about anyone who wants to continue to grow and move up. You constantly face rejection in any arena. And so I'm gonna include a link at the bottom to an article that has 10 benefits of being rejected um, you can just check it out. I think it's a really strong article and uh, there really are some benefits to being rejected. Okay, mentality tip number two. Typically, I found the worst rejections are when it comes from a close friend or other people rather than like a robot or you get rejected for a loan and it's just based on a criteria. When other people are involved, you can take it personally. So do not take it personally. Let's say you're in sales or something and you're selling a product or service and someone says no to that. If you say something like, they rejected me, they didn't like me, when meanwhile they just didn't have a need for your product or service, that's not a rejection for you, that's a rejection for the thing. So don't internalize it, you're fine. And honestly, on that same note, I use the term Sonder a lot. It's basically the thought that everyone around you has a life as vivid and complex as you. That's very true, you don't know what's going on in their life. Maybe, maybe someone broke up with you having to do nothing with you, purely because there's crap going on in their own life. Think about that. Okay, mentality number three. Don't downplay it if you're really hurt by a rejection. A super good psychologist friend of mine, Vanessa, had a conversation with me. She said a common misconception for dealing with people that went through trauma is to downplay it. Saying things like, it's not that bad, or look at the bright side, are actually completely not helpful and it's completely undermining to the person that's going through the trauma. Like maybe for you it doesn't seem like a big deal from the other side, but they're on the verge and they're depressed and they're suicidal and all of that and you're saying, it could be a lot worse. Really? I don't think so. Mentality piece number four is the only time you know you're 100% responsible for a rejection is if you reject yourself. So don't reject yourself, treat yourself right, come on. All right, now on to practical things that we can do. Number one, don't put all your eggs in one basket. If you only have one friend, one event, one application out there, one whatever, and that falls through, it sucks, because you have no backup. So you put everything on that and it does not go through. Instead, if you're applying to a job, Throw another three, four applications out there so even if that one that you really wanted doesn't come through, you still have another two, three, four that are on the back burner waiting, right? Same thing with an event. If there's one event that you're waiting for and that falls through and you have two or three others, it doesn't feel nearly as bad. So don't put all your eggs in one basket. Okay, practical tip number two. The feeling of being rejected is simply pain. It's the same pain you get from physical pain when someone dies, it's all pain, your body sees it the same way. So if you have healthy coping habits that you use for those other pain, then what you could do is use those same coping mechanisms for when you get rejected, right? Maybe that's reach out to a friend, spend some time together, read, go to the gym, right? Whatever is a healthy habit for you, go for that. All right, practical tip number three, be pragmatic and make educated decisions on where you're putting yourself out there. I'm kind of gonna harp on this one because I think it's really important. Not being drafted into the NFL when you've spent your entire life and you've devoted yourself to football and you've gone to a good football college and you've done everything in your power is much different than the Philadelphia Eagles are having open tryouts and you've never played a lick of football in your life and you go out and you're crying because you didn't make the team. Those are different. Or you can't believe you didn't get a job as a lead software engineer and you've never used a computer before. You're fucking kidding yourself, bro. What are you doing? If Simon Cowell didn't push you through on American Idol to the next round, even though you were garbage at singing, grow up. Because that's not a rejection, you're an idiot. <laughs> All right, practical tip number four. At the end of the day, what's the big fucking deal? What's the worst possible outcome that could happen? 
Seriously, you didn't get a job. Does that mean you're never gonna get another job in your life? No, obviously. You asked a girl out and you got rejected? Does that mean you're, there's not one other female on the planet that is now eligible for you? It's like, honestly, life goes on and hopefully you take the lessons that you learned from that rejection and apply it to the future so you have better success. All right, action item time. I got a good one for you this week. What I want you to do is go out there and get the worst rejection of your life. I want you to straight up ask out the hottest, most unavailable chick that you can find or go on google.com careers and apply for a C-level position over at Google. All right, I'm obviously just kidding, but in all seriousness, the next time you do get rejected, check out these practical steps and actually apply them, right? What's the worst that could happen? Was this an educated decision that I made to even put myself in this position? Did I put all my eggs in this one basket, right? These are practical things that you could use in the future. So I hope that helps you guys. I had a fun time making this video. I hope I didn't piss any off too much, but I love you guys. Stay safe, I'll see you out there. My Facebook friend unfriended me. My girlfriend broke up with me. I didn't get the job at Google. My mom kicked me out of the house because I wasn't paying any rent. <laughs>